Good evening. I'd like to call the City of West Bend Plan Commission for Tuesday, August 6th, 2019 to order and recognize that we do have a quorum tonight of the, of the Plan Commission. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on tonight's agenda is approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of the Plan Commission dating back to July 9th, 2019. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments, questions, or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Jim, if you could handle the next three agenda items as I'll abstain, I may have a conflict of interest. Thank you very much, Mayor. <clears throat> Uh, the first item is uh, number four, development proposals. Uh, a is 2020 comprehensive plan, a public hearing at 6 p.m. <clears throat> this is a public hearing for a request to amend the 2020 comprehensive plan for the city of West Bend for a change in the recommended land use from multifamily residential to two-family residential for approximately 9.3 acres of land located at 113 Cedar Ridge Drive by the Benevolent Corporation, Cedar Community. The applicant is Lynn Olson of the Cedar Community. The agent is Adam Hurdle. We'll have, <coughs> excuse me, Jim Reike, our business and development uh, planner to please lead us on. Thank you. Um, tonight's request um, is for a change of our comprehensive plan. Um, back in June of this year, the Plan Commission reviewed a request to change the land use from um, a portion of this um, property from multifamily residential to two-family residential. Um, the request is for approximately 9.3 acres um, located on the northern edge of the 49-acre Cedar Campus um, site. Uh, the surrounding land uses um, around this area include residential and agricultural uses um, to the south and west. Uh, single family and two family uses to the north and park recreation and open space to the east. Um, given the existing uses and the size of the parcel and the overall density of the um, development, uh, staff finds the proposal to be an acceptable alternative as for land use. Um, th this two family use would be a transition from the current multifamily use transitioning to the um, single family use to the north. Um, prior to amending the zoning for this, the comprehensive plan um, will need to be amended so the um, proposed zoning would be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, a public notice has been sent out and published um, in the newspapers and sent out to the neighbors within 200 feet, um, and planning staff did not receive any inquiries regarding the um, land use change. Um, as a part of the comprehensive um, plan amendment, um, we're asking the commission to um, approve a resolution acknowledging the change and recommending the change to council for their final action also. Uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Now, this is an open uh, uh, meeting, so anybody in the audience who would care to comment on this issue, please come to the podium, give us your name and your address, please. Ladies first. Uh, my name is Joan Adler. I live at 2920 Kilkenny Court, and my backyard abuts the property that's under consideration at Cedar Ridge. Um, last Monday, uh, we were all invited to an informational center, uh, informational session at the Ridge, and I would say all but one or two of the neighbors that are affected within the 200 feet uh, parameter attended, and it's my belief that our questions were adequately answered. Our main concerns were maintaining the visual barrier, the tree line between our houses and the ridge. Another concern was um, lighting, that there wouldn't be really bright lights put up there. And the third concern was the quality of the houses to be built. The fourth was to maintain some access for us down uh, the edge of the property uh, so that we could easily get into Ridge Run Park. And obviously our first choice would be to have nothing ever built there. 
um, but that's not uh, a realistic expectation and so I would speak in favor of uh, this new development. If we're going to have something built there, decreasing the zoning density uh, is a much better alternative than building a strip of apartments there. Thank you. Good evening, Commission. Uh, Tom Boyer, 2923 Kilkenny Court, neighbor with Joan. Uh, I want to publicly acknowledge uh, Lynn from Cedar Community, as Joan recognized the other night, they invited all the neighbors out there. I thought it was a great open forum. I thought it was a good dialogue, good suggestions that Joan pointed out a few of those. Uh, I appreciate uh, Cedar Community um, really recommending a uh, dual family, single family. They could have easily gone multifamily, which a lot of people don't like. Uh, my only concern I have is on the setback. Um, I know it exceeds the city plan commission, I guess. My house, living there 30 years, I guess there's a 57 foot setback from the tree line to the north. I'm just concerned about that distance because I walked off from the lot line, and I know that lot line because I moved there 30 years ago, to the end of the tree line, which is 30 feet. So that means that houses on the north in their backyard are going to have, what, 27 feet of green space. So I don't know if that's the intention of the plan, but I'm just concerned about the setback on the northern ridge of the homes to the north. I don't know if that can be adjusted down or taken into consideration because the big concern that the neighborhood had was keeping that tree line. Because again, when I moved there 30 years ago, they were this tall when they were planted. And that's a huge investment, Cedar made on that, so I don't think they want to lose those trees. So again, my biggest concern is the setback. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, as far as your, we'll discuss the actual site plan in our third item on the agenda, so we'll look at that before. Right now, we're just talking about amending the comprehensive plan. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this issue? Thank you, gentlemen. My name's William Hanson. I live at 125 Cedar Ridge Drive, apartment S240. And I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Cedar Community. And I, I am a second generation resident of Cedar Ridge. My wife is also a second generation from her parents. And the, the quality that, that Cedar Ridge delivers is there isn't a match to it. We looked at a lot of places before we came here, and uh, it, it's just unbelievable. The site plan, yeah, beautiful trees, the pond, and the way the property is taken care of. You know, when you look back that it's over 30 years, and the prop when I take people through on a tour and say, yeah, this building's over 30 years old, they can't believe it because it's so well taken care of. So as far as these new homes, I would see no problem with them taking care of it the same way they take care of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, board, and ladies. My name's Bill Myers, MYRS. I reside at 5482 Village Drive in West Bend, uh, and that is part of the village community of Cedar Community. Uh, independent standalone homes. My wife and I came there, we've lived there for 13 years. We came from the tip of the mitt, the northern part of uh, Michigan, and we looked, we had kids and grandkids in uh, northern Illinois, and we hoped to be near them and not have the drive around or through Chicago. Uh, Cedar Community came to the very top of our, of our list. We visited about six or eight, and we, we heard uh, by mail or phone from uh, maybe a dozen or so uh, residential communities. And Cedar Ridge just rose to the top. We are, after a four and a half year wait, we got one of the independent homes. Uh, we have been very pleased with that uh, for a long time now. I have been five years on the board of directors of Cedar Community as well. Uh, so I'm here to urge support of both the amendment and the related zoning change. And uh, I'd like to say the independent living, which these uh, homes, if approved, uh, will be, they're gonna be very attractive. Is I don't know how much presentation you've had on that. Uh, they're similar to what we have, the Cedar Community has up at uh, Elkhart Lake. 
and if anything, a little improvement over those. And those are very attractive, uh, very desirable by lots of people. And they also help support the uh, charitable portion of the work. The independent living supports the uh, not assisted living, but the nursing home operations with the Medicare and Medicaid, on which there's a constant loss, as I know on the board. Uh, we we subsidize that, and it's the independent living, among other things, that that very much helps that that possibility. So I would like to speak in favor of both things, and I think it would be an addition to the, uh, certainly to Cedar Community, and a good addition to the city of West Bend as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else want to speak to this issue? If not, um, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Move to close Second. the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the same sign. Motion is carried. <clears throat> Moving on, what does the commission's pleasure on this? Approve the resolution. Second. Okay. Further discussion? If not, all in favor <coughs> of approving the resolution to amend the 2020 Comprehensive Plan of the City of West Bend, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the same sign? Motion's carried. Thank you. Moving on to the next item is on number B, a zoning amendment. And it's a public hearing scheduled for 601. Oh, a little bit behind. And it's no one. Uh, it's ZPU-19-008, a public hearing for a request to rezone the northern portion of the property at 101 Cedar Ridge Drive, approximately 9.3 acres from RM4 multifamily residential to RD2 two-family residential and to add a PUD planned unit development overlay district over the entire property at 101-125 Cedar Ridge Drive to allow for approval of the site plan for the development of new two-family independent senior living homes by Benevolent Corporation of Cedar Community. The applicant is again is Lynn Olson, the agent is Adam Harrell, and Jim, you will enlighten us further, I'm sure. Yes, thank you. Um, this rezoning request, again, is for that 9.3 acres um, area that was being considered for the comprehensive plan change. Um, the request is from the RM4 multifamily residential to the RD2 two-family residential. Um, as a part of the rezoning request, the owner is also requesting a planned unit development overlay district over the entire property, um, which is approximately 49 acres. Uh, the purpose of the um, zoning is to accommodate the development for that northern portion for the for 15 two-family buildings um, in conjunction with the existing multifamily building. Um, the area to be rezoned is surrounded by RD1 two-family residential zoning to the northwest, RS3 single-family residential zoning to the uh, northeast, and P1 park recreation and open space um, to the east. Um, the lands to the south and west are um, town, town zone lands um, that surround this area. Um, the two-family residential zoning will be used as a transition um, from the existing multifamily use to the single-family use to the north. Um, right now, the, um, the zoning would not be consistent with the 2020 comprehensive plan until the council approves that um, amendment that was previously um, acted upon um, this evening. Um, all property owners, again, were not notified, or property owners within 200 feet were notified of the public hearing. Um, staff received a couple of general inquiries pertaining to the two-family zoning and the open space separations. Um, staff would recommend approval of the rezoning from RM4 to RD2 um, for that northern portion, along with the plan unit development overlay for the entire property um, to the Common Council. Uh, thank you, Jim. Again, this is an open, <coughs> excuse me, I mean, and anybody out there would care to address or speak to this? I move the public hearing be closed. It's been moved and second to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same sign. I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Is there a second to that, by the way? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion on part of the commission? Hearing none, all in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the same sign? 
motion is carried. <coughs> Excuse me. Turn my papers. Site plan for Cedar Ridge communities. And number one is SP-19-021 site plan to construct 15 new duplex homes for independent senior living within the northern portion of the property at 101 Cedar Ridge Drive by Benevolent Corporation Cedar Community. Again, the applicant is Lynn Olson and the agent is Adam Hurdle. And Jim, carry on. Thank you. Um, this site plan is a component of the um, plan unit development and zoning amendment that was previously acted upon. The proposal is for 15 two-family buildings on the northern 9.3 acres of the property. Um, the property will be zoned um, RD2, two-family residential, which is consistent um, for this type of proposal along with that um, plan unit development overlay district. Uh, the overlay district is being requested um, as a part of this for the two zoning districts and to help with the shared private utilities and access. Um, access to this development will be from Scenic Drive via Cedar Ridge um, Drive. Um, a total of 130 parking stalls are um, being provided for this new development, which is adequate for the um, parking requirements for the additional living units. Um, a private sidewalk has also been provided along the north side of the private drive um, to provide access throughout the, the site of the, the development. Pr uh, private sanitary and sewer exist into the property, and this development will have the um, services extended from these existing laterals to serve the buildings. A stormwater management plan has been submitted um, to the engineering department and is currently under review. Um, the site has been designed to generally drain the um, the site to the east and to the west where the water will then be directed to stormwater ponds on either end of, that, of this development. The architectural building elevations um, being provided um, show that each unit will be um, approximately 1,687 square feet and the architectural materials for each building will consist of hardy plank, cedar mill lap siding, cultured stone, and dimensional shingles. Um, staff finds the architectural building elevations to be acceptable. Um, the site plan also identified um, 15 light poles being um, used along the private driveway um, for this um, new development. Staff didn't have any lighting concerns um, based off of their um, photometrics that they provided. Um, landscaping has been provided throughout the site. The, um, the site provides landscaping around each of the building units along with adequate um, screening along the north to fill in the gaps where there are openings and also um, along the um, roadway. Um, park fees would be required for each of the um, dwelling units prior to the issuance of the building permit. Uh, staff would recommend approval of the site plan with the listed staff conditions. Okay, thank you. Tom, did you want to refresh us on what your concern was again? If I can add one, too. Uh, it's just a setback. My house is probably at the 12 o'clock position, I, behind the lot line, I should say. So, um, again, the concern is keeping the tree line. If the tree line stays there, again, I don't know from development or excavating standpoint, if the tree line can stay in there, I think most owners don't have an issue. But my guess is that they're going to have to take some trees down. Uh, and I hope that doesn't happen. Someone said about the light poles. What's the height of the light poles? Are they standard city or are they smaller in that subdivision or quasi subdivision? Um, Adam, you would be able to answer that. So again, it's just a setback on the tree line. If the tree lines stay there, where I think most owners are fine with the setback, but because we don't want a situation like Ford dealership, the people on Valley that extended that parking lot, they have all those lights 24 hours, they, those lights beam right in the backyard of people on Valley. So what's the height of that? Good evening, my name is Adam Hurdle and I am the agent of the applicant. Um, so to answer uh, your first question, I believe the light pole heights, uh, they are 20 feet uh, and it's not, it's more of a decorative fixture, um, kind of like a um, gas lamp type of fixture. Um, it's not like a, what you'd see in a typical parking lot um, that's got an overhead with a dual on each side. It's more of a decorative uh, light fixture. Uh, and just to speak a little bit about to the, uh, the trees, it is the intent to 
maintain that tree line as much as possible. Um, and any in, in the gaps that we do have, we are planning on planting new as we show in the landscape plan. Um, so, but it is our intent to maintain as many trees as possible. Any other questions? And I can, yeah, if there's any other questions. Commissioner, have any concerns? Jet? Just a minor question. Um, the plan called for no parking signs on the private street, but the site plan says it's going to be a mountable curb, which invites, usually a mountable curb means that you're inviting vehicles to park over the curb. That's why they call it mountable. Um, is, is a mountable curb, I've never noticed that before. Is that standard? Um, we've seen a lot of the mountable curb over in the the PUD portions. Okay. Um, you know, either way, I mean, they could have vertical face or mountable. It's, you know, this is what they're proposing for the mountable, but um, that is an acceptable type of curb. Okay. And we are providing um, along that south side, there are parking spaces specifically for to invite people not to park on the street. So we've provided four parking stalls. Um, I, think there, I believe there's 12 there total. Mm -hmm. Any other concerns on the part of the commission? <clears throat> if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve SP-19-021 site plan <clears throat> with the following conditions. All grading and building new construction shall be in accordance with the approved site plan. Provisions of a landscape been adequate surety prior to the issuance of a birding building permit, payment of park fees for each building unit prior to the issuance of a building permit, approval of a stormwater management plan prior to any land disturbing activities, submission and approval of an erosion control plan prior to any land disturbing activities, revision of the site plan set to address minor technical corrections, and approval of the comprehensive plan and zoning amendments. <clears throat> Entertain a motion to? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the same sign. Motion is going to thank you. Thank you very much, Lynn Olson and the Beno uh, Corporation. <laughs> thank you very much. I must comment. Uh, I heard a number of uh, comments, as Mr. Boyer had alluded to, of the presentation that Lynn and Julie had made uh, uh, last week to all the neighbors and everything. Very comprehensive, very well thought up. Uh, and it really, I think, answered and addressed a lot of people's concerns. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Moving ahead to item D under certified survey maps and extraterritorial certified survey maps is D1, which is CSM-19-009, redividing three lots into two lots located between 2462 Finch Lane and 1432 Hummingbird Lane by Craig and Kristen Walker and Joel Keister, who are the applicants, and the agent is Richard Simon from Cornerstone Land Surveying, and a presentation by Jim. Thanks. Um, this certified survey map is located on the um, west edge of Finch, Finch Lane in the uh, West Bend Highlands Edition Number 2 subdivision. The purpose of the uh, CSM is to redivide three, the three platted lots into, two, um, into the two lots. Um, the, each of the property owners on either side of the vacant lot um, acquired the property, and we're just redividing that property um, between the two uh, property owners um, for this uh, land division. Um, lot one is nine is 1.9 acres and ha has the existing home, and then lot two is 0.9 acres and also has an existing home. Um, both lots have access off of the uh, public streets of Hummingbird Court or Finch Lane. Um, Staff would recommend approval of the um, CSM with the condition that some minor technical corrections be uh, made prior to recording the CSM. Thank you, Jim. Are there any questions for Jim? I would entertain a motion on the item. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Congratulations to the walkers. And Mr. Keister, enjoy your extra elbow room. Again, under uh, item D is D2, XCSM-19-010, dividing one lot into two lots, located on Mapledale Road and North Oak Road, town of Trenton, by Bradley Kopp and Dale Kopp, uh, who are the applicants, and the agent is Paul Hilmer from Hilmer and & Associates. And again, Jim. Thank you. Uh, this certified survey map is located approximately a half mile north of the city limits uh, on the north side of Mapledale Road, just east of North Oak. 
Uh, the purpose of the CSM is to separate the existing home from the remaining lands um, to create a new lot for sale. Uh, the CSM is not in the city sanitary sewer service area, but it is within the planning, the planning area and is identified as single family um, residential, open space, and agricultural uses in our 2020 comprehensive plan. Uh, lot one is 4.88 acres with the existing home, and lot two is 9.1 acres. Um, a seven foot right away reservation is provided for Mapledale Road consistent with the city's official map. Uh, staff would recommend approval of the CSM with the condition of that minor technical corrections be um, made prior to the recording of that CSM. Thank you, Jim. Any questions for Jim? Move to approve. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Congratulations to the cops. Get under item D is D3 XCSM 19 012. Create <clears throat> four lots located on North Trenton Road and Mapledale Drive in the town of Trenton by Coventry Meadows. Uh, John Follett from Coventry Meadows is the applicant, and Kevin Parrish from Quam Engineering is the agent. And Jim, take it away. Um, this map. Um, again, is um, located just east of Trenton Road on the north side of uh, Maple. Uh, the purpose of the CSM is to create four new um, lots for um, sale. The uh, CSM, sorry, um, lot one is 5.9 acres, lot two is approximately six acres, lot three is 7.1 acres, lot four is five acres. Um, lots one and two have access from uh, Trenton Road, and lots three and four have direct access to Mapledale. Um, the certified survey map will need to be revised to um, incorporate some technical corrections, including um, a seven foot wide right away reservation for Mapledale and a 17 foot right away reservation for Trenton Road in accordance with the um, city's official map. Staff would recommend approval of the CSM. Um, with the conditions that the road reservations and minor technical corrections be um, corrected on the CSM prior to recording. Thank you, Jim. Questions for Jim? Move to approve with the conditions, uh, or the corrections, excuse me. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Item D4 is XCSM-19-013, create four lots located on David's View Lane, west of Beck Lane in the town of Trenton by Coventry Meadows. Again, John Follett as applicant and Kevin Parrish as agent. And Jim. All right, thank you. Um, again, this, this CSM is located uh, northeast of the city of the corporate limits. Um, again, the developer will be um, creating um, the cul-de-sac bulb on the west end of David View um, Lane. Uh, the creation of these four lots is for um, the sale of the lots. The southern portion of the lot of, of, the, of the CSM for lots one and two are within the city sanitary sewer service area, and the northern portion is not in that um, sanitary area. Uh, the 2020 comprehensive plan identifies this area as single family residential, and is consistent with that plan. Uh, lot one is five acres, lot two will be 10.3 acres, uh, lot three is six acres, and lot four is 19 acres. Um, all of these lots will have access from the cul-de-sac bulb from David View Lane. Um, the CSM will need some minor technical corrections also um, to this prior to recording, and staff would recommend approval with that condition. Thank you, Jim. Questions for Jim on this one? Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Congratulations to Mr. Follett. Item D5 is CSM-19-007. Create two lots within the River Shores Development, River Shores and River Bend Drive by Kyle Gapson of River Bend, River Bend Development, who is the applicant, and Matthew Clementi of Stantec is the agent. And Jim will tell us all about it. Thank you. Uh, this certified survey map is um, for the lands at the northeast corner of River Shores of the River Shores development. Uh, the purpose of the CSM is to cr create two lots. Um, lot one um, has an existing parking lot 
and there is a site plan proposed also later on the agenda for the expansion of that parking lot on lot one and lot two is the remaining vacant lands of the um, development for river shores um, it is anticipated that lot two will eventually be redivided um, with uh, future development and a csm would be required for that to provide the additional um, needed right away for the um, cul-de-sac bulb or whatever is needed for the to terminate River Shores Drive. Um, a developer's agreement would need to be um, completed for this to um, set the obligations for the developer for the completion of these public improvements on River Shores Drive. Um, access to lot one will remain um, from Shore Lane and then lot two, um, which is being created, will have access from River Shores Drive. Um, as a part of the development, um, the city has initiated the um, vac street vacation process for a River Bend Drive right away and a portion of River Shores Drive right away. Um, in fact, the Common Council acted on that last night as part of the development process. Um, that street vacation is consistent with the master plan that was approved by Plan Commission. Uh, staff would recommend approval of the um, CSM with the listed staff conditions. conditions. Thank you, Jim. Questions for Jim? I'm going to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Under item E, site plans is E1, SP-19-015, site plan for a parking lot expansion located at River Shores and River Bend Drive in the River Shores development by Kyle Gapson. Uh, who's the agent and excuse me the applicant and again matthew clementi from stantec is the agent and jim thank you um this parking lot this is the site plan is for the parking lot expansion at that northwest corner of shore lane um, the original parking lot was constructed back in 2014 and um, this expansion will be um, constructed on lot one of the csm that was just approved um, the 1.36 acre parcel is zoned MXD and the proposed uh, expansion meets the setback requirements for the MXD. Uh, 55 additional standard parking stalls are uh, proposed for this um, expansion. Um, access to the parking lot will remain from um, Shore Lane. Um, the site plan does identify a few barrier free parking stalls being added to the public parking on Shore Lane. And um, upon review, uh, staff would uh, requ require them to remove the, the ADA parking from the public parking and place that into, into the lot as a part of the um, revisions to the site plan. Um, the stormwater management plan amendment um, is needed for the, um, for the parking lot and needs to be submitted to the engineering department um, for approval. Um, the existing grades and proposed utilities also need to be identified on the parking lot if um, there are any additional um, utilities. Um, again, as a part of the um, development proposal, River Bend Drive um, and a portion of Shore Lane will be um, vacated um, in, in order to accommodate the development of the parking lot. Staff would recommend approval of the site plan with the listed conditions. Thank you, Jim. Questions for Jim? Someone have one, he's getting bored. Oh, is it entertain a motion on the item? I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Congratulations to uh, Mr. Gapson and Riverbend Development. Get under uh, site plans is E2. SP-19-022 site plan for an architectural facade update at 1713 North Main Street by Dr. Ellie Dowden, who's of Cornerstone Dental, who's the applicant, and Mark Hertzfeld of Design to Construct is the agent, and a presentation by Jim. Thank you. Um, this building, or this architectural building renovation is located at the 1713 North Main Street. Um, Cornerstone Dental is planning to renovate the interior and the exterior of the building to update the building um, with, with a new look. Um, this site plan um, does not include any site alterations um, as, as a part of the um, proposal. Uh, the property is zone B5, Neighborhood uh, Office and Service District. The architectural building elevations 
um, identify new building materials on the west side of the building, which consists of a wood-grained um, light national walnut aluminum siding or colored aluminum siding, um, along with a portion of the existing brick staying on the southern end of the building that will be painted a grizzly gray. Um, new vinyl siding will be um, replacing will be re replacing the existing vinyl siding on the remaining portions of the building. Um, the architectural building elevations also shown show a future sign location on that south end of the building. Um, as a condition of the approval, staff would recommend approval of the um, plan with the condition that sign permits be obtained prior to installing any new wall signage. Thank you, Jim. Questions for Jim? I would entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carries. Congratulations to Dr. Dowden. Thanks for expanding in West Bend. Item E3 is SP-19-023, a site plan for the redevelopment of Carl Kuss Field at Regner Park, 800 North Main Street, by the West Bend Park Recreation and Forestry Department, who is the applicant and the agent is Fields, building sports parks of distinction. And presentation by Mark. Good evening, Mark. Good evening. <clears throat> this is a little out of your normal wheelhouse. Um, as far as development pl plans go, but this is for the redevelopment of an existing ball field within Regner Park along the north edge of Silverbrook Drive. Um, they basically are taking out all of the facilities that currently exist um, between the concession stand and the um, easternmost ball field. Um, they are proposing to put in a new um, new f baseball field with perimeter fencing, um, new team dugouts, and uh, um, have a couple of alternatives for their backstop barriers. They also are, are including accessory concrete approaches, lighting, and a new dedication monument uh, within it. What is not in this proposal, uh, this is phase one only. Um, there is no details or proposals for the actual grandstands within this development. Um, the baseball field itself, synthetic turf over an engineered drainage base, so very modern state of the art. Um, the perimeter curbing is used to stretch that synthetics, and then there are under drains that um, are shown within these plans that transmit to a centralized storm sewer connection that heads east um, to existing facilities in the park drive. Uh, they show two options for different backstop structures. Um, the what I've been told is the preliminary one is a 30 foot high combination of chain link and safety netting um, on steel poles. Uh, the other one has um, a little shorter, it's 22 foot, I'm sorry, it's um, a little shorter, longer than that, 23 and a half feet. It has a two and a half foot masonry knee wall with fencing and safety netting above that. Um, they have not indicated which is the preferred, um, but I presume that the it'll be the um, less expensive one um, for the with the netting and fencing until such time that they would propose for the grandstand um, at the, at their earliest. The um, abandonment of existing water main and service lines are required in order to do this. Uh, they need to install new ones to redirect around the new facility. Uh, this will do. This will require some. Um, permits for that type of work. The storm sewer lines, both north and south of the new field, um, also do require some permitting and we are uh, awaiting some um, stormwater calculations for this site still. Um, very little grade change being proposed within this. Um, some of the grading would potentially be within the flood fringe area of the creek, um, but it's not anticipated to have any impact to flood elevation or flows. Um, obviously, erosion measures will be important because of the proximity of the of the stream. Um, this and all work, including beyond what's shown on their um, silt fence, will be required for the um, this. There are some technical corrections that we would ask. Um, the, it's obvious that the facilities do meet dimensional setbacks for the park zoning. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, however, we have nothing actually dimensioning that. Uh, within the plan set and also it does not physically locate the facilities within the park site we would ask that be um, included 
So we would recommend approval of the site plan with the five conditions listed. Thank you, Mark. Any questions for Mark? Yes. Jim? Several. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, number one is when this is in place, how long can we anticipate this lasting before it has to be replaced? JD, of that info, I know you've been involved in most of the discussions with uh, the fields folks. Yeah, I assume the questions regarding the turf field. It's the synthetic turf, yeah, yes. Itself. Uh, 10 years, 10, 15 years is my understanding as far as how long, if properly maintained, it'll last. How much will it cost to do that revision when it has to be replaced? It'll be a significant expense. Significant to what degree? A couple hundred thousand, yeah. half a million? To I mean, the, the cost of the turf continues to come down over time. When it was first being installed in municipal situations, it was it was cost prohibitive for most people to do it. It's a, a big chunk of the cost of, of this uh, first phase. If if I'm to guess a couple of hundred thousand dollars to replace it in the future, I, I don't know that we know that answer prospectively, but it's it's six hundred thousand dollars of the cost of this phase one now. Who's responsible for the maintenance once this is completed? Yep, so the field will be maintained through a combination between the WBBA and the Parks Department. Uh, the WBBA has been under conversations with the city about um, taking over the, the, the maintenance of it, uh, the scheduling of the programming that goes on there. The Parks Department currently does that, and that agreement hasn't been fully hammered out between the city and WBBA at this time. How far are we to completing financing for the first phase? The Cal Ripken Foundation Group is assisting the City of West Bend with a MLB uh, grant, Major League Baseball grant. If we're to be successful in receiving that grant award, which it's a $450,000 request that Cindy and uh, Craig and um, Craig from Craig Larson from the WBBA worked on collaboratively, if we're successful in receiving that, we'll be there for phase one and we could anticipate seeing work in the, in the near future uh, post Labor Day. Do we have to provide any matching funds? Uh, the, Funding for phase one is is in place if that grant comes in. So the, I mean, I could run through the list of funding to get to the the 1 1.5, 1 1.6 million, but the, the last real big piece of that is the MLB Foundation grant. And I guess we can't uh, forecast the future, but my concern is we get the field in and some backstops, but we can't do anything with the grant stand because there's no money available. What's our recourse then? Yeah, the, the group, the Major League, um, the WBBA um, Association, the city, the school district, a group of fundraising individuals from the, from the city are, are working on that right now. There, there is no guarantee regarding a, a second phase and the timing of that. The people that are involved are very passionate and, and are hopeful to raise that money and close that um, gap, if you will, for the second phase just as soon as possible. I was hoping to bring me better news than that because I, <clears throat> that's a bit disturbing without having that. Thank you. No, no, thank you, Jay. Another for Jim. What, what are the two buildings on this picture? That's for the next item. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Jim. Thanks, Jay. Any other questions for Jay related to the site plan? Yeah, if there's any site plan, yeah. Kevin from Quam Engineering, Kevin Parrish, who has been volunteering his services to help with the site plan design, is here. If there's any specific questions that you have about that, I'll duck out and let him be the technical expert on the job. I do have another question. <laughs> Related to the if site we, plan, we have no idea where the utilities and everything else are located, can we anticipate, and maybe Max can help us, if there's going to be any additional costs for that, and how will that be covered? That is handled already. We do know where the utilities are, and that's what Quam Engineering has donated their time to put together full site plans, uh, utility okay. plans, grading plans. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. I just have a question about the lights. Mm -hmm. um, I know the lights used to be inside, and now they're outside. Now that they're outside, does that mean they're in the softball fields? And how is that being handled? Um, you spent lots of time there, I know. Um, the real egregious one is in left field, uh, so those will be moved out. And since the, the 
the softball diamond that used to be in left field is now a basketball court. It's a non-issue. And I believe the lights in right field um, aren't an issue either. They'll be up against the fence and they won't affect that softball diamond at all. They'll be between what the two fences are now. And the idea, I believe, is the whole field itself is moving a bit out, a bit meaning, I'm guessing, 15 feet or so, out into left field to give a little more breathing room uh, off of Silverbrook Drive. I was curious about the comment that was made about the drainage. It's all draining underneath, so we shouldn't see some of the problems that have been there in the past with, with it's kind soggy of a, fields. It's kind of a key piece from the, the city's perspective. Um, we'd all like to see it done in one phase. Um, the reality is, A, it costs us a heck of a lot of dollars to maintain a field um, that is slowly turning into a swamp, as you've experienced. And then also the grandstands um, have probably exceeded their their usable life and our parks department and maintenance department and other folks have done a great job of keeping those standing upright uh, but there's there's no guarantee as to how long that will actually happen so while I would love to see a grandstand going right away um, uh, the one that we've got is probably got uh, a limited life left so as Jay mentioned it's been a really passionate group um, the, the West Bend Baseball Association the school district I don't know if you mentioned Jay is uh, financially involved uh, the city, of course, Cal Ripken Jr. Foundation, the Fields Organization, and then hopefully Major League Baseball is the last uh, cherry on top for, for phase one. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve with the five conditions. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Congratulations uh, to WBBA and the city and the school district and hopefully the youth that will be playing baseball. And I should have mentioned the intent is that other sports can be played there now also uh, since it's a turf field and it's, we're not at risk of, uh, of ripping up the grass. Uh, moving on to item F. Discussion item F1 is continued discussions regarding amending the restrictions on accessory structures for corner lots in Chapter 17 Zoning Code, West Bend Municipal Code by the Department of Development. And the city of West Bend is the applicant, and Mark is going to lead us through this. You, <clears throat> you discussed this at the uh, previous July 9th meeting. You asked staff to give you some real-world examples um, in your packet and, and displayed um, our six exam such examples. Um, they include both aerial photography and oblique um, fo photos of six different sites to give you an example of corner lots where either... Um, garages or accessory structures or both were found um, to exist. Only the first one is the example of the gentleman who has a corner lot who is asking for the zoning code change um, so that he can construct, wanted to demonstrate that on his lot, you can see in the upper, in the middle picture, the aerial photo, you can see he has a ex fairly extensive side yard, um, has plenty of room to go towards the rear of the lot, which is his, his preference. Um, and the appearance on the top photo, you, would, you can see how far back that would actually visually would be. Um, don't see any objection to that item. Uh, the other examples we have, Jim, if you'd go to the next one, um, we'll go through these really, really quick. The, this one here, we have um, a typical accessory structure for a garage right behind a, a home that has also an attached garage, and then it also has an accessory structure back behind the detached garage, um, the view shed from the street um, on the side can be, you can see um, on both top and bottom, um, not exactly um, an inappropriate um, appearance for a structure such as that. And yet um, there, it's certainly not in conformance with our current codes. Um, go to the next one, Jim. This one um, pushes the limits. We have a corner lot, um, single family home in the front. We have another structure back behind it. And then in the photo, there is just a parking area. That's a 2017 photo. You can see in both photos, top and bottom, that there's another accessory structure that appeared within the last year uh, on the site. Um, they come and go, this, this is one of those types that gets dropped off on a, it's on a pallet form rather than on a foundation so these um, type of things appear quite quickly in our city even and this one probably is without permit next one Jim this one again a detached um, got a single-family home 
a detached garage behind it, and then tucked back in the corner, there's another accessory structure. You can barely see it in the bottom photo on the right. It's in that dark blob. Um, I'd like to make the observation that almost every time I've gone to these different sites looking for these things, people have made the, every effort to either shield the sheds or to push them as far back from the roads and their neighbors as they can. Um, so they're already doing some of the things we're recommending for in this, this change. Next one, Jim. Example five, here's a, brand, a relatively new subdivision. This is within the last 10 years. Um, they've got a structure as far back into the corner of the lot as they can on a corner lot. It has um, it's very well um, maintained appearance. They put fencing and landscaping around it. Um, to shield it from their neighbors, and the view shed from the, the street is, um, it's hard even to see the, the structure. And then example six, um, again, this one is a, a relatively new, less than 15-year-old subdivision. It has two back-to-back -back structures, uh, accessory structures. Um, both of them look like they're the um, pre-made drop-in-place plastic um, type structures. Um, but if you look at the top picture on the right-hand side, you'll see that he tucked it behind a berm, landscape berm, with about a four-foot elevation change, so you can barely see it from one corner. And on the back side, the other gentleman's can be seen, but the, the um, one to the west is completely screened. So people do make an effort to, to make these things work. Um, to give you a sample of how many and where these are, Jim, if you go to the map, please. Um, we just ran an analysis through the GIS. Um, the red are two-family corner lots with at least one accessory structure or more. The green are the single-family version of that. Um, the green alone is, was probably over th around 340, and the two fa uh, the two-family ones are probably between the two and 300 range, as well. So this is not an uncommon situation. You can see the distrib by distribution is predominantly in the older areas of the city, um, probably predating, most of them predating the codes, but not all uh, within this thing. And so it's not, an, it's not that big of an exception from what, we're, what we had in the past is what we're approving. So the recommendation that we gave you last time, I reiterated here basically, asking you to um, direct staff to allow accessory structures within the side yards for both corner and non-corner lots um, while requiring effective screening and a suitable appearance standards. We would write those codes, and bring that back to you for a public hearing if you feel that's acceptable. Thank you, Mark. That was exciting. <laughs> for some people, I'm sure it's very exciting. Um, Jim. Thank you. All these ones you list here are non-conforming. Have these people been broached when they took out building permits or anything? Uh, we have. I have not approached any any of these. Um, I do not. They're non-conforming. I don't know if they're legal or non-legal non-conforming, or if they're illegal non-conforming. It would depend upon the circumstance of when the structures were built, what the rules were at that time, who did the determinations. Um, there were. There's multiple ways that they could have been built and still be um, non-conforming today, but legal back then. So uh, I, the intent of this was not to try to do a uh, enforcement action on any of this. It was to give you a sense of uh, how rare you would be, if you changed the code, you'd be making the situation. And it's not that rare. I think my con concern here is that if we do approve this, are we going to be able to police this or something, or just <clears throat> sign off on a building permit? If you don't have to say no all of the time to the people coming to the desk, they'll probably come and ask for the permit and we'll get better enforcement on the screening and the location, um, rather than us having to chase and discover it when someone turns them in or we happen to notice it. Thank you. Mark, it looks like you're requesting, um, or your recommendation is that site plans 
would come forward and to be determined at a future discussion is if they can be handled administratively or if the planning commission wants to see those. My feeling is if someone's going to build an illegal shed, they're going to do it with or without this code. Hopefully we're allowing some other folks that um, that just because how the code was written weren't able to have a, a shed and hopefully that'll encourage more folks, as you mentioned, to come forward and do it the right way. Any other thoughts, Jed? I'm, I'm, the example three, is the shed on the skid, is that code? My, my guess is there, it depends on the size of the structure. Okay. Um, certain structures, when they get over a certain volume, they start requiring to be founded um, for wind load and, and the rest. On these type, my guess is it does not meet our code, but it is fabricated on and located on a concrete slab. So depending on how they anchored it down, I'd have to give you a qualified. I don't know at this point, but we'd have to look at that. And, and I'm not trying to make trouble for whoever this is. It's just in the context of the discussion, if we would be facilitating um, more of that, um, is that is that a shared driveway between two different residences? No, that back structure is an accessory structure. Oh, really? Correct. It looks like another house. Yes, sir. Okay, well, we'll just let that go for now. <laughs> Mark has more slides, Jed, if you're interested, I bet. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, is directing staff to write it up, type it up, and bring it back for some review? If that's concurrent, sure. That makes sense, everyone? Super. And be no further business before the Planning Commission, I adjourn. We do have one announcement or one question or confirmation that is regarding next Tuesday's Planning Commission meeting. Just want to confirm we have enough folks that can make it. I think it's a two item, uh, two agenda item uh, meeting, so it should be relatively quick be a week from today, and that's to help facilitate um, the uh, renter property on the south side of the city. Yes, yes, how many do we need? We, we I know Chris was Chris not going to be here, Max was not going to be here, so Jimmy I just wanted cool. to confirm we had an agenda. Rich? I'm here. I'm here. Three, four? We have five um, plus um, Alderman Jenkins, okay. six, and Sarah, you prefer not? Jim. We'll be ready for you. We'll get the pledge done and you can run right in. Awesome. Thank Good night, everybody.